Hello everybody, this is C.J. Wiley with more Adventures on the Road. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the mental game. I was uh, having a discussion with Omaha John the other night and he brought up some uh, some funny things. You know, he, he had one of the strongest mental games I think I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, talk about bearing down. Uh, you know, he also stayed in really good shape and, and would run like five miles a day or every other day so he would go into a mode and just never make a mistake and his forte was bar tables but he played really good on big tables too and uh, he said that he could beat Buddy but he couldn't beat Siegel and uh, not that he's saying that he's a better player than Buddy not at all but he was also uh, you know just making a uh, an example of sometimes, you know, when player A can beat player B and B can beat player uh, C, A won't be able to beat C. And it's kind of a strange thing. You may have uh, experienced that. Like I had a couple guys that, uh, you know, I was supposed to beat. You know, I beat better players than them, but uh, I just had a hard time against them. One of those guys was Rafael Martinez, who was an exceptionally talented player, but, uh, you know, I arguably beat a lot of players that, that would beat him, uh, even though, you know, it's odd, he beat Efren playing one pocket several times, and I don't think Efren really enjoyed playing him one pocket, <laughs> because, you know, the magician, Efren Reyes, comes with a lot of, like, creative shots, mass A shots, and and, uh, you know, could just pick apart a rack to, uh, to run eight and out on you or ten and out on you. But Raphael could do the same thing. Raphael had an incredible stroke. I've, I've talked about him as far as uh, when I teach people the stroke, how the, the motion is like hammering a nail. Because Raphael told me <clears throat> his father was a champion player or a high-level bigger player and taught him how to to, you know, the stroking mechanics with an actual hammer. And I grew up on a lumber yard. My dad owned, uh, you know, a, uh, a place that, that made feed bunks and hay feeders and saw horses, all kinds of like farm equipment and, you know, things to, to feed animals and cows and pigs and water them and, you know, all kinds of uh, stuff like that. So I grew up hammering nails and using, you know, uh, equipment. I used to drill holes in in uh, in these little iron things. I can't even remember what you call them, but they they're used to attach uh, hay feeders. So uh, they'd have like four uh, nail holes uh, on one side and four in the other, and you would you would connect the, the four by fours or whatever. It's been a while back, but but I remember drilling all those holes. I, I didn't like that kind of manual labor. That's why I got into the uh, snow cone business. And, and started selling snow cones. My dad actually uh, used to make me, he would never give me money, you know. If, if nothing else, he'd make me beat him playing poker to win the money. And because uh, <laughs> I think he was kind of a, a poker sucker, to tell you the truth. I, I just remembered that. Uh, my mother uh, complained about him losing some, some pretty big money. So maybe uh, maybe that's where I got the gambling, but I never did enjoy losing, even though I, I was always a good loser, unless somebody was cheating me or uh, trying to get over, over on me some way that was uh, underhanded. That uh, I never liked that at all. But Omaha John was talking about, uh, he came in Big John's in Omaha, and that Bucky Carroll that I mentioned in one of my last videos was playing <clears throat> a guy from... Uh, he was a road player from from Detroit, or Michigan at least, <clears throat> and uh, so when John came in, he, he saw Bucky was all razzled, and he wasn't playing his regular game, and, and so he goes up, and he's like, Bucky, what what's going on? And he goes, oh, I'm playing this road player. I don't know how good he plays, and he's he's from Michigan, so he, you know, he must be a great player, and, and John said, Bucky, that guy's not from Michigan. He said he's from like Fairfield, Iowa. He's like a shortstop. He says you're supposed to beat this guy every time. And uh, Bucky's like, really? 
He goes, yeah, who gave you that information? He says, well, I heard it from somebody. He says, man, John's like, no, man, you got the nuts here. So John said that, that he immediately, you know, at the uh, end of that game went over, and Bucky was, uh, what did he say? They were playing 10 ahead, and Bucky was like uh, six games down in the 10 ahead set. So John went over there and bet 50 a game on Bucky because he could only lose four more games. That's 200. Or if Bucky uh, turned it around, he would win, you know, the, uh, the six games back plus 10 is 16 games, which is a good move to do if you ever get the opportunity, you know, if somebody will do it with you because if they're playing on a headset and, um, and some and one player is is uh, down that you think can win. It's a real good idea to bet on them. Anyway, we're talking more about the mental side of this because once Bucky found out from John that this guy was a nobody and he's supposed to beat him, his whole demeanor changed. John said, and uh, and he uh, immediately started beating the guy and came back and won that set. And the guy quit, and I think he said they played like a week or two later, and, and Bucky beat him again. <clears throat> because uh, we used to call those guys lamb killers, because if they thought they had a lamb, they'd play like Willie Moscone. But if you shot at them, and that's what we did, is we shot at them. Uh, put pressure on them, is what I mean. And they would fold. See, the, the way that I made uh, most of my big scores is I would play somebody and I would do things to make them play better, to make them more confident and uh, get them in the zone. See, that's where it was tricky, especially at first with me, because when you get the other player in a zone, you better be able to come with it when you have to, because you're going to be up against their best game. But most people will lose the most money when they're playing their best and they're in that zone, they can't quit. So uh, there was times where I couldn't come out of the stall, and uh, you know I I I'd, I'd either break even or, or the guy might beat me a little bit, and I could always come back the next day and and beat them. But sometimes they would they would figure it out and uh, and they wouldn't play, especially if I had to show too much speed, uh, you know, there at the end just to just to break even or whatever. So anyway, that's. Um, you know, just as an example, real life situation. Uh, John said that it happened the opposite to him too, where he was in L.A. and uh, he was playing Cole Dixon, but he didn't know it. And Cole was uh, one of the best players from California, and pretty feared. You know, him and uh, Keith McCready and, and Dennis Searcy and Jimmy Reed, and there's a lot of really good players out there. <clears throat> so. Uh, John said he was nine games up on Cole Dixon, didn't know who he was. Uh, a friend of his came in and gave him the, uh, the Tom sign, which is this. He, you know, this means Tom, which is bad. This is George, which is good. Double Tom, <laughs> double George. So uh, that's just uh, kind of a, a well-known uh, communication between hustlers, George and Tom. So anyway, he gave John the Tom sign, double Tom, and uh, John was like, what the heck? And, and so John said he tightened up and then, uh, you know, took the pressure off Cole. Well, Cole came back and, uh, and broke even, or I don't know if, to, John probably didn't lose any money in that situation because, uh, you know, basically psychologically he thought he had somebody that, that he could beat. And then all of a sudden, somebody said something that changed his mental attitude, changed his, uh, his paradigm as far as what was actually happening in the match. Now, my partner, Strong Arm John, was really good at, uh, at doing the opposite. He's like a really good coach. So uh, he knew how to talk to me to get me to play my best game, you know, and he used different techniques that, uh, you know, that I've actually relayed in my videos. Uh, you know, I've made a lot of them and several on the mental game that had some really strong stuff in it uh, for, for people that, uh, that are looking for, for real ways to improve their mental game. And, uh, I remember, uh, Weldon Rogers, uh, 
one time we were with Doug Smith and we were down in Texas and Doug was having a hard time beating a guy and he was tired and uh, he didn't know, uh, you know, if he could play much longer. And, and uh, Weldon went up, got a cup of coffee and went up to Doug and gave him the cup of coffee and, and told him, you know, a strong insinuation that he'd put some stuff in that coffee that would make Doug play like lights out and, uh, you know, and a lot of endurance, you know, some kind of amphetamine, which wasn't even true. But Doug believed it. And, you know, within 20 minutes, again, he was like Bucky Carroll. He just straightened up and uh, started just warping on the guy. And, uh, and what was funny is uh, he had a hard time sleeping that night because he thought in his mind that he'd taken this stuff that, uh, that was going to not only make him play better, but would wire him up where he wouldn't be able to sleep. It's a placebo. And uh, a lot of people get on drugs, and, and it's more of a placebo. They, they just think they play better. A lot of people that drink alcohol that play pool, they just think they play better when they're drinking, but they actually don't. You know, I love to see people doing drugs or drinking uh, when I'm playing them, gambling with them. And, uh, you know, shoot, I've, I've been on the other side where I had a few too many drinks, and I thought I played better than I did. So, you know, uh, we all, you know, there's two sides of the coin for all of us. I mean, anything that I talk about that I've learned and, uh, and share as, as bits of wisdom are probably things that I've learned the hard way, you know. That's the difference between uh, my situation and a lot is I didn't learn all my stuff in a classroom, you know. I learned it uh, in pool school on the road in real situations from, from people that uh, were usually experts in their field. Anyway, uh, if you like these videos, I'm going to start talking about uh, some really cool stuff here soon as far as the game that I'm creating and, and going to get out. So uh, please like, share, subscribe to the channel, you know, hit that little bell so you get notified if uh, I put a new video up on YouTube. And uh, if you're watching on Facebook, I appreciate you uh, liking it and sharing with your friends. And remember, the game is the teacher.